to the Holy Spirit brings illumination. The Bible says in John chapter 14, verse 26, But when the Father sends the Advocate as my representative, that is, the Holy Spirit, He will teach you everything and will remind you of everything I have told you. So here we see that the Holy Spirit has a twofold job. He does, of course, many other things, but in this particular verse we see that He reminds and He reveals. He reminds us of the teachings and revelations that we've received from Christ, from His Word. He reminds us of those things that we ought to put into memory. He reminds us of those things that we need to correct. So when we hear the teachings of Christ and we receive that revelation, when the words of Christ dwell in us richly, when His truths permeate our beings, when what He says transforms who we are, when the words that the Father breathes begin to transform our nature and transform our minds and transform our behavior patterns, the Holy Spirit reminds us of those truths that we need. I want you to write this in the comment section. Let it be your prayer, whether you're watching live or on replay. And I want you to write this sincerely. Write, teach me Holy Spirit. Often, if you find yourself discouraged, the Holy Spirit will remind you to be encouraged. If you feel as though God has rejected you, you feel like he's abandoned you. The Holy Spirit is the spirit within us who causes us to cry, Abba, Father. So the Holy Spirit reminds you of the truth that you belong to him, that he's not rejected you, that he's not left you or abandoned you. He's not tired of you. He's not run out of patience for you but that he abides faithfully with you. The Holy Spirit reminds us of those truths that we need the moment we need them. When you go before those who are questioning your faith or you're evangelizing and trying to help someone understand the gospel, the Holy Spirit will bring to your remembrance the things that you have learned. But he also reveals. He reveals those truths that we've yet to fully receive or realize. So the Holy Spirit reminds us of what we've heard and then he reveals to us the truths of the word of God. I remember when I first began to study the scripture, at the risk of embarrassing myself, I'm just going to tell you that I didn't understand most of what I read. And I'm a slow reader by nature anyway. So I would begin with, let's say, James chapter 1, verse 1. And just a few verses down as I began to read, I would have to stop because I realized, wait a minute, I didn't understand anything that I just read. I literally got nothing out of what I just read, so I'd have to start over. And then as I would read that chapter, I would find myself just being distracted in my mind, in my heart. So I was reading the words, my eyes were scanning across the pages, but internally I was somewhere else and I realized, wait a minute, I wasn't even paying attention to half the things that I was just reading this moment. And so it was the Holy Spirit who began to help me. I cried out for his help. I said, Holy Spirit, Jesus talked about you being my advocate. Jesus talked about you being my teacher. Holy Spirit, not only do I need you to remind me of the truths that I've received, but Holy Spirit, I need you to teach me. And there is no greater teacher. For it was the Holy Spirit himself who inspired men of old to write revelations from heaven. The Holy Spirit was the one who breathed on the prophets, causing them to declare the oracles of God. The Holy Spirit was the one who caused the apostles to write, who caused the epistles to come into existence. The Holy Spirit inspired the word of God through the men who would write it, who would record what the Spirit was saying. So what greater teacher is there than the one who inspired the scripture? The one who inspired the scripture is the very same who sits with you today and desires to teach you the meaning behind those scriptures. Yes, you can study the word, Yes, you can understand some of the basic concepts. Yes, you can understand the history and maybe even some of the philosophy. Atheists can read the Bible and memorize it. Historians who don't know Christ can, and I'm not saying no historians know Christ, I'm saying specifically historians who don't know Christ can study the scripture and be enriched by the history that's unfolding before them as they read the scripture. But they can't truly receive revelation. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is that light. He illuminates the word. He brings it to life. He, he causes that word to be life-giving to us. Jesus said that the words he speaks are life-giving. They are spirit and life. When Jesus speaks 
and he declares. And when those men recorded the inspiration of the spirit, that word, those truths hang in eternity. They never change. The word of God never changes. The word of God cannot be bent by man's will. You cannot convince God to change his mind on certain issues that he's already spoken about. So the Holy Spirit reveals to us those truths. The Holy Spirit causes us not to try to mold God into our own image, but instead it causes us, the Holy Spirit, he causes us to be molded into the image of Christ as we go over the word. When you read scripture, you're not just reading a book. The word is revelation. And that revelation brings transformation. The word of God is the substance. Hear me now, please. The word of God is the substance with which the Holy Spirit forms the character of Christ in you. The word of God, that makes up the spiritual building blocks of your spiritual life. And so when you're receiving of the word, you're not just scanning a page and receiving information, but you are communing with God himself. Now, those who are atheists, those who are unsaved, those who study the word from a purely intellectual standpoint cannot possibly truly receive the truth. Sure, they can grasp them to a certain degree, but those truths never go deep enough to transform who we are unless we have the help of the Holy Spirit. We must be yielded to the Holy Spirit of God for he is the teacher and he doesn't just teach us the information. He causes us to, by the Spirit, receive revelation. And that revelation is what brings transformation. So the Holy Spirit reminds and he reveals. He reminds you of the teachings that you've received and he reveals the truth as you study the scripture. The Holy Spirit sits beside you. He's not far from you. He's not off in the distance. He's not a million miles away. The Holy Spirit sits with you even now. He dwells in you. What know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost and you are not your own? The Holy Spirit dwells in you. And the teacher who dwells in you will reveal as you're faithful to study the scriptures. The Bible says, study to show thyself approved unto God. You must study, yes, but add to your study, surrender to the spirit. For only when you have the Holy Spirit can you truly receive the truths of God's word in such a way that your life is transformed. 1 John 2, 20 says this, but you are not like that. For the Holy One has given you his Holy Spirit. And all of you know the truth. The Holy Spirit brings clarity and certainty. He brings revelation and illumination. This is what we mean when we say that the Holy Spirit is symbolized by light. Now, not in every instance that we see light is it a symbol of the Holy Spirit directly. But biblically speaking, as you begin to move through the Old Testament and New Testament, you'll find that often the presence of the Holy Spirit is associated with light. The work of the Holy Spirit also associated with light. You see, when I, when I tried to study the word on my own, pure memorization, pure intellect, uh, I, I just approached it uh, analytically and I wanted to understand it, you know, in, in that sense. But it wasn't until I began to really ask the Holy Spirit, please teach me, show me, help me to be transformed by the word. Because I don't want to just comb through the scripture, memorize some ideas I want to live the truth. I want to know the word and I want to know Jesus. I want to know the presence of God. I want to understand his ways. Oh Lord, I want to know you. That was my prayer. That is my prayer, my desire, my passion. I want to know him. It wasn't until I surrendered to the Holy Spirit. It wasn't until I recognized his presence in my life. It wasn't until I yielded to his voice that I began to truly see the scripture come alive. You see, the word of God is lively. The word of God is exciting. The word of God is thrilling, but not if you don't have the Holy Spirit. See, if you don't have the Holy Spirit, it's just information. If you don't allow the Holy Spirit to teach you, it's all intellect and intellect is dry. And it's not bad, but for the most part, it's just dry. But when the Holy Spirit begins to illuminate the scripture, you are fascinated by the revelation of Christ found in its pages. I'm telling you right now, that studying the word of God with the help of the Holy Spirit, it's unlike anything else. If you're studying the scripture with the help of the Holy Spirit, 
you're not trying to force yourself to read the word because that's how many believers read the Bible. They read the Bible as if it's some obligation that they have to religiously fulfill. No, but when you read the scripture with the Holy Spirit, it takes everything in you to pull yourself away from the scripture. To where now you're saying, well, I got to get to my responsibility. I have to eat sometime. I have to sleep sometime. And parents, you may be saying, well, someone has to go and watch the kids or feed the kids at some point because you're so, you're so enamored by the scripture. It, it, it pulls you in. There's this beauty to the scripture that comes alive and you can't really see it until, until you have the Holy Spirit helping you. You read the scripture without the Holy Spirit. It's like watching a film in black and white. You read the scripture with the Holy Spirit and suddenly there's color and life. So I'm going to pray with you right now. And I want you to resist the urge of the flesh because the flesh is so easily distracted. I want you to resist the urge of the flesh to click on something else, maybe something you might find entertaining. This is not about entertainment. This is edification. This is not the cheap things of the world. We're talking about heavenly realities, which which, which are far more fascinating than anything this world has to offer. I'm talking about the realm of heaven now, living in that realm. I want you to fight the urge of the flesh because I believe God has purposed for you to be right here, right now, watching at this very moment. Father, I thank you that you are present in the room. And I pray, precious Jesus, that you would begin to touch your people let them sense the nearness of your presence, not for the sense and feeling alone. But Lord, we just desire you. You are our desire. Tell them that right now. Just say, Lord, you are my desire. Now, I want you to say this again, but this time I want you to say it out loud. I'm serious. Say this out loud. Say, show me your glory. Come on, say it. Say, show me your glory. Thank you, Jesus. Touch your people, I pray. Rapture them in the beauty of your presence. Let them know the depths of your glory. Raise them above the troubles. Raise them above the attacks of the enemy. Raise them above the attacks of even people who speak against them. Those whose hearts are heavy, Lord, I pray you would help them give you their burdens. Lift them now. I see them like coming to rescue you. He's lifting you now. Let him do it. Father, I thank you for every life being touched every heart being transformed. You see, this is his power. This is his presence. You don't have to strive. You don't have to beg. It's not something you have to work toward. Simple faith, you walk right in. Simple faith, you walk right in. And burdens are being lifted now. You're being refreshed in his presence. Chains are breaking in the spirit. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. Only he can do that. Only he can do that. And so, Lord, I thank you you're touching lives around the world. I want you to write it in the comment section. If you believe it, write amen. 